Hello everyone. In this presentation, I am going to explain about some of the essential tips while doing access cavity preparation, which will be very helpful in preventing errors while doing access cavity preparation. Let's dive straight into the tips. And the first tip is, whenever there is a tilted teeth and we are preparing an access cavity, what modification are we going to do? What happens is, it's a common practice that we prepare the access in a molar, more mesially and buccally. And whenever we are preparing such access cavity preparations, we will end up preparing an access something like this. In this, there are more chances that we will perforate in the mesial surface and there are even many cases where the file will be inserted through the perforation inside the bone and or the periodontal ligament space. So how are we going to avoid it? So please understand that whenever the tooth is tilted, we also have to prepare an access cavity which is also tilted. That's the simple principle. So how are we going to know how much the tooth is tilted? In order to assess that, we have to take a preoperative radiograph and we have to draw a line along the long axis of the tooth to assess how tilted the teeth is. More often, we encounter the teeth which are mesially tilted rather than distal tilted because there might be a missing tooth and the distal tooth will, will tilt towards the mesial surface causing such a problem. So there are some tips that we can follow it. One, take a proper preoperative radiograph and analyze the long axis of the tooth. Second, we have to prepare an axis or a cavity for around three millimeters and retake the radiograph. Now it will give some idea which angulation your axis is and which direction your axis is and also how close you are to the axis, uh, how close you are to the pulp chamber. So all these things will give some ideas how you are preparing the access and always use the external surface of tooth as a guide so always try to follow this whenever you are in doubt try to have a direct vision over the tooth although we are experts in using the mirrors and using and preparing the access in indirect vision but if whenever you are having a doubt always prepare I try to see the tooth in direct vision and take a probe or a burr and align it along the long axis of the crown and then you will get more idea where you are preparing, which angulation you are preparing. So the final tip that I am going to tell whenever the tooth is tilted is try to prepare the axis more towards the central of the tooth instead of more mesial or more buccal distal or any of this direction try to prepare it in a more, more centrally a centrally oriented axis cavity preparation is the one which will prevent us to make mistakes while preparing access in a tooth okay let's go for the next tooth the attrited teeth and access preparation it is it is often neglected that we often think that preparing an access in an attrited teeth is very easy. Let's see this example. The, the first molar, which is having a severe attrition, but the second molar, which is normal with a decay and there is no noticeable attrition. So what are we going to do? We, let's keep that. The, both these teeth are indicated for access cavity, that is root canal treatment. And in the second molar, we have prepared an access. So let's keep that we have prepared for around 7 millimeters inside the tooth while you are accessing the tooth. But if you are preparing the same 7 millimeter in the attrited tooth, we will end up doing a perforation in the furcation region. So how are you going to assess this in before committing the mistake? So the first and foremost, the important is as usual, the radiograph. So whenever the teeth is attreated, do not neglect it. More number of perforations happen in attreated teeth. Maybe the tilted teeth and attreated teeth can be considered as the most number of 
the teeth which are more prone for uh, causing perforation. So whenever there is attrition, pay more attention and do not follow the rough assumptions from a general population or a general, uh, like a, for a mandibular molar, I can go 7 millimeter, 6 millimeter, do not have that. So this attrited teeth are uh, more common with patients who are having habits like bruxism or betel nut chewing or any such habits. Uh, and, and one more thing is, in attrited teeth, we cannot expect a drop inside the pulp chamber. So most cases of attrited teeth will have uh, pulpal calcifications or there will be a pulp stone. So always assume that they are more prone for perforations. Prepare two or three millimeter, take a radiograph, use a DG16, try to loc locate the orifice and if not, then go deeper and with repeated radiographs so that we can avoid this. And the second mistake, especially which is done by the beginners is, whenever there is a cervical aberration, and if you are supposed to do a root canal treatment, what we do is we excavate the caries and it gives an assumption that through this prepare, prepared area, we can insert a file and we can do cleaning and shaping. But that's a very, very a wrong concept it is not recommended even though it gives an illusion that we can prepare an access through this cervical abrasion it should not be practiced whenever you are practicing such a thing always keep it in mind whenever you are using a rotary endodontics the stiffer portion of the file will come to the more coronal area if the stiffer part of the file comes in this area and if there is an acute curvature it will be leading for more file separation or it will be prone for fracture so that has to be avoided even though it gives an illusion that it is easy actually it is not always prepare an access through the uh, occlusal surface especially for mandibular premolars and such a thing happens you prepare the access insert a spreader or a file through the prepared access then you restore the cervical aberration then you continue with the regular root canal treatment and let's see about the proclaimed teeth and access cavity preparation let's see two teeth the first example it is normal there is a little proclination for all maxillary incisors there will be a normal proclination and the second situation there is an extreme proclination or a bimaxillary proclination type of uh, situation so let's see regularly we prepare the axis in such a way that we will extend the preparation inside the pulp chamber and then from there we can do little modifications but whenever there is more proclination if we are following the same angulation and if you are preparing in the same manner what happens is we are preparing it in a wrong direction and if you are trying to locate the orifice without knowing that we may perforate labially the all beginners all beginners face this problem so the the first and foremost recommendation from my side in preventing and recognizing this is try to look at the tooth in direct vision always follow that it may look odd you are you are having a mouth mirror and you are trying to look the tooth in a direct vision and your mentor may say that no no we should never look at the tooth in the direct vision instead of uh, creating a perforation it is not wrong to look the tooth once or twice in direct vision or at least you make an entry inside the pulp chamber you can look at it in the direct vision the second is prepare the axis more close to the zingulum rather than going more towards the the superior position of the cingulum. Let a little portion of the cingulum, let it get sacrificed, not a problem. So we can prepare. So my recommendation is whenever the tooth is proclaimed, so instead of preparing it above the cingulum, just come and include a little portion of the cingulum and prepare it. Second, have a look in the straight vision, that is the direct vision and try to use a DG16 or a straight probe and try to prepare a little and try to probe it till you get a catch. Once you get a catch, 
you put a 15 size or a 20 size file through the catch that you have got negotiate and the file will give an idea how bent the file that you have inserted will give you an idea how far you have to enlarge which direction you have to enlarge so that the file will have less curvature so always keep this in mind whenever there is more proclination try to see the tooth in direct vision and have a straight probe and try to probe in and around the tooth and get an idea how, how proclined it is and the third is prepare the axis including a portion of the cingulum rather than preparing supra uh, cingulum region so this will prevent the problems of perforation and the final tip for the uh, day is Let's keep that we have prepared the access, we have done cleaning and shaping and we have put some temp, uh, intracanal medicament and we have sent the patient. The next visit, whenever the patient is coming, there may be a missing coronal seal. So, uh, whenever the seal is missing, it is equivalent that we have not placed any medication inside and the root canal will definitely get infected from with all the microorganisms which are present in the oral cavity which have to be avoided at any cost. So what are you going to do? Let's keep that the, the, there are two teeth which we have done cleaning and shaping. Let's keep that we are placing a calcium hydroxide as an intracranial medicament. We have placed a cotton pellet. On top of that, we know that we have to place a temporary filling material. Whenever the, we lose the temporary filling material, what we always think is that we have not made as uh, kept a sufficient thickness of the root uh, the temporary filling material or we think that uh, the material that we are using for temporary restoration is not strong enough so we may think of changing the medication but that's not that so usually whenever we are placing it what happens let's see the first situation whenever there is an occlusal load applied to the first tooth that is the first molar this temporary filling material will try to sink inside why this is happening because the base is not strong we have placed a cotton pellet so the temporary filling material will sink in during masticatory load and the filling will break into two or three pieces but let's do a small modification let's make a little wing or a little slanting preparation in the occlusal surface then if you are placing a temporary filling material this small extension will prevent the temporary filling material going inside although the base is a weak a cotton pellet still the temporary filling will be strong and we will never get the issue of the temporary filling material getting dislodged so hope these simple tips are really helpful for you and i hope that you like this type of tips let me know in the comments and if you like this type of presentations subscribe for my youtube channel smart dentistry and put a thumbs up that will make me to do more videos thank you and have a nice day